When he was just 17 years old, Carlos Correa was drafted by the Houston Astros. Skip ahead a few years and Correa is a star in Houston. After some of the worst years imaginable by the Astros in the early 2010s, Correa was part of the group that started a winning culture in Houston. 2015 was Correa's rookie season, and the Astros made the postseason. They missed out on October in 2016, and Correa along with the rest of the Astros probably took that personally, because they have yet to miss the playoffs since. The cheating scandal eventually broke out, and Correa took on a villain persona. Lots of people hated him, sure, but that didn't stop Astros fans from loving him. Same with the team, and with the front office. The Astros are all Correa has ever known for the last decade of playing professional baseball. That has now changed, with part of that being because the team didn't put too much effort into bringing him back. Carlos Correa is no longer a Houston Astro. Out of absolutely nowhere just recently, Correa signed a deal with the Minnesota Twins. Not only was that shocking, but the contract was too, as he only signed a three-year deal with an opt-out after the first two. Leading up to Correa's inevitable free agency, most assumed that he was likely leaving Houston. Even during the season in 2021, Correa acknowledged himself that if it was his last year in Houston, he wants to go out with another championship. That isn't necessarily the sound of someone dedicated to do everything he possibly can to stay where he's at, but more so dedicated to get the most cash out in the market possible. If it happens to be the Strohs, awesome. If not, so be it, he's gone. That is how Correa has always looked at the free agent market. So it should come as a shock to nobody that he eventually signed elsewhere. With that all being said, in the days leading up to Correa's deal with Minnesota, there were heavy rumors that the possibility of the star shortstop returning to the Astros was gaining traction. The thought was that he'd return to Houston on a short-term deal worth a lot of money, of course, but not necessarily the years, and he would soon enter the free agent market again if he could not come up with an extension with Houston. Well, we all know what ended up happening, as Correa wound up getting that short-term deal not with Houston, but with the Twins. Three years for $105 million. What ended up happening was not what we were hearing. Nobody in their right mind knew or predicted Carlos Correa was signing with the Minnesota Twins. And nobody in their right mind knew or predicted Carlos Correa signing for only three years. That's because everyone was duped, or misled, however you want to put it. The reports that the Astros eventually became the frontrunners at one point were false, because not only were they not frontrunners, but owner Jim Crane reportedly did not talk to Correa's side before he signed with the Twins. In fact, he refused to. Well, at least that's what the reports in Correa have said. The Astros, or in other words, general manager James Click, just recently released a statement on Correa leaving, saying that it's a very difficult day for the organization and wishing him and his family nothing but the best moving forward. He then went into how the Astros were in fact in contact with Correa and his agent Scott Forrest actively throughout the entire process, and even had Correa let them know he was moving in a different direction. Correa, like I said, has a different side of the story here telling the Houston Chronicle, quote unquote, we didn't hear from them. That's all I can say. So someone is lying here. At least it seems that way. The Astros are claiming that they kept in touch with Correa and his agent Scott Forrest before the Twins deal, but Correa said the opposite, claiming that they did not hear from the team at all, with other reports saying that the Astros refused to negotiate. At Twins camp, Correa made it clear that he has nothing but love for Houston and the Astros front office and ownership, while also mentioning that the club did not make him any offers after the lockout. Not one. That's a big claim to make, and something that only he, Boris, and the Astros know about for real. But from what us fans have gathered over the last year from the lowball offers the Astros did give Correa, along with the few reports that he was returning, it looks more and more like the Astros did not put much effort into bringing Correa back to Houston. Let me know what you think, and thank you for watching.